Hi folks, welcome to week two, part two of the fourth axis trunnion video. I think this might actually work. I'm super excited. So we've got it kind of mocked up here. We've got the fourth bolted down. Before I go any further with this, it's just sitting in here about where I want it. We need to dial in our tailstock. You know, again, not the uh, best designed tailstock. Too many decrease of motion. Very tricky to, to dial that in. Um, we've got it within a thou as we rotate the coax indicator around, which is great. That doesn't ensure that the face of this is perpendicular to the axis, or rather that this thing is basically straight in line. I've got it checked via the distance of this rough casting to the front edge of the plate, which is by no means perfect, but we're, the goal here with this product is really clearance hole. So while it's awesome to try to get this dialed in, as a machinist or aspiring better machinist, I'd like the ability to do that. I'm also not gonna over engineer the job because there's just no reason to. I would say that that's a weakness. And frankly, if I wanted to do this a lot, I think I would build my own, oh, maybe that's a good video right there, my own tailstock because you're just gonna fight too many degrees of freedom with that thing. Oops. Okay. Preload it a little bit on here. Lock in our quill. Cool. Hey. Oh, I hope this thing works. Uh, okay, well, let's just see how flat are we. <laughs> At this point, this whole thing could be a massive fail and I'm still having fun. Well, it's not gonna be a fail, of course, but um, this is really freaking cool, right? Tormach had a Trunnion demo with their big cast iron tombstone thing, the open house a couple years back, and that was cool, but this is different. Ooh, yes, sweet. Okay, so three thou, four thou across five inches. I'm totally fine with that, and Let's rotate it this way, and let's check the face. <laughs> Big, uh, huge amount of cosine error here, but video here where we talk about that, but that's not, uh, I'm not concerned with absolute re measurement. I just care about relative. It's funny, I've become a little sheepish as I talk about this uh, measuring stuff because I started to appreciate how good people are out there and the two names that keep coming up. Okay, so that's got a little bit of a problem here. Are Tom Lipton and, and Robin Ranzetti who have great YouTube channels and great info on this stuff. Why is that off so much? It's not, I mean, it's not that bad, but it's way worse than I'd wanted. We're talking about, ten, we are talking 10 thousandths over five inches, so two thou per inch. Well, let's fix it. The bar has just been raised, I feel like, which is great. I mean, that's why I started all this was, I knew nothing, I didn't know what a Bridgeport was, I didn't know what Enville was, and I wanted to share what I learned and pay it forward. I'm increasing pressure, I need to push it back, which means I need to tap. Why is that not, there we go. See, the problem is if I'm now out of alignment, which is why this darn thing has too many degrees of freedom. Maybe it's springing, you know what I bet it's doing? I bet it's springing back because it's in the center. If I pull this. Okay, well, there we go. So let's just see, Was, is that the problem? If I, huh. Well, that's showing run out right there. Which could be in how I press that pin in there. I mean, it's also just, you got some wobble in it. Hmm. This is one of those fun times where you just want to cut and edit all this out. So what happens as I drive this in? It's correcting it to some extent, which is good. I bet you it's just springing back. So I'm actually going to tighten these screws down a little more. <laughs> yep, I think that's going to do the trick. So by keeping the screws tighter, it's springing back a little less. Now we're down to five thou across. Yeah. 
and that's pretty good. That's a one, two and a half or so across. Now let's gently tighten each one a little at a time. Try not to twist it more or twist it at all as we snug this tailstock down. Sweet! We can use a bubble level to get this roughly dialed in. The comma and period keys on your keyboard let you jog your A axis. Pretty close. So we're increasing pressure as we go across. So come back half that distance or so. Pretty good, I might come up one. So within a thou across that face. We'll set that equal to zero. Let's go cam up our fusion. It's so easy to do the fourth axis positional stuff and let's see if she works. Fourth axis cam. New setup. It has nine bodies in here because it's looking at every single visible component. I just want our part. So click the little X, click on our model or our body here. I have a glitch in my fusion, sorry. Change your mode to, I'm gonna change my mode to fixed size box. Yours probably would have been relative size box. And come back to setup. So this is really important where we have our work coordinate system. We need to have the, in this case it would be the XY origin in line with the center of rotation. So it has to be the center of rotation, which would be the center of the shaft, which would be that point right here. The X doesn't matter, so I could have it anywhere, say left to right, but front to back and top to bottom, it's gotta be on that point. So let's change orientation to select Z axis. What's my Z axis? I'm gonna pick the top of this plate. What's my X axis? I'll pick this line and that's wrong, uh, flipped rather. So I'll click the tip of the X to flip it and that looks correct. But now I need to change the point. So I'm gonna change my origin from stock box point to a selected point. And I'm gonna hover my mouse over the center drill hole circumference and when I click that, it's gonna pick the center of that point. So does everybody see that? I've got the Point is the center of rotation. X is pointed up, the Y is pointed forward, the X is to the right. Click OK. Drilling. We'll drill with the number seven drill, rather. Geometry. I'm gonna drill from this side where I've got more clearance to the part. So first thing I'm gonna do is check tool orientation. This is what causes the fourth axis to rotate. So cool. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick my Z axis. In this case, let's start with the outside hole. So I'll pick that hole, the, the tube of inside of that hole. If you see that actually orients the X axis in line with that angle. What's my X? This line here, notice right now the X is incorrect. So I'll click this X here and that looks correct. So I've set my tool orientation. Now I'm gonna come back up here to geometry, hole faces. Instead of nothing, I'm gonna pick one, two, and heights. We're gonna have it poke through the bottom with say 50 thou extra cycle. We'll do a deep drilling. This wasn't working before on the Tormach post. So I hope it's working now. Oh, sorry, not full retract, I wanted a chip breaking. So I wanna peck 30 thou, but then every 0.2 inches, I wanna come back out of the hole so that we don't build up. Other thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna peck at 18 inches a minute down, but we're gonna come back up at 100 inches a minute. Click OK. Right click, duplicate. I'm gonna edit the second one. Delete my two faces. I'm gonna delete this stuff. 
So the next inside holes, my z-axis is the tube. My x-axis is the line here. It's got it, the z flipped, so I'll click that once. Now that's upright, and my hole faces, one, two. Other parameters are already there because I duplicated it, so I'm poking through, and my cycle should be good. Right click, duplicate, last one. Z axis will be there, flip that, X will be there. So I've got Z, Y, X looks good. And whole faces one, two, click okay. Let's watch a simulation. So unfortunately the tool moves and not the part, but that's okay. You get the idea, you'll see here it repositions itself. Sweet. Let's go make some chips. Let's set our origin. So if I find the top of this part here with the Heimer, we're on zero. We've got tool 99, which is my Heimer. I'm gonna type in 0.75, enter. Why 0.75? Because it's a 1.5 inch tall part and our origin is right in the center. So right now, I'm 0.75 above our true origin. Same thing for the Y. I'm gonna find the back edge. Come to the Y, and I'll be honest, a lot of times I will type 1.5 divided by two and hit enter. Yes, I know that's 0.75, but I just hate doing math in my head. It's how you make mistakes here. And X is pretty easy because I just have to find the right edge. Posting the fourth axis code. Post, click OK, click OK, and fail. So, what happened? Look at this error. Valid rotary table axis values are none, X, Y, Z. So what this means is we've got to tell it what position our rotary is in, because you could put it in the X, the Y, or the Z. By the way, I'm using the latest Tormach post from cam.autodesk.com slash posts. I'll put a link in the video description. But it says supports three and fourth axis milling. So I was like, okay, this has to work. So if I click on the setup once, Go to post process. There's some actually pretty important stuff in here. And sure enough, rotary table axis. I originally typed A, but that was wrong and that's what made me look through that error more closely. We need to tell it that our rotary taxis, axis is in the X orientation. If yours is on the right side of the table, so that would be, I think, those um, the super spacers, I would probably be negative X. So now if I click post, click post, Voila, we get code, which is awesome, except there's one problem. It's rotating the wrong way. I'll email Tormach. I don't know if this is something I'm doing wrong or whether it's just a glitch. So totally unacceptable in the run, long run, but this will get fixed. And for now, see this say 283.5, I'll take 360 minus 283.5, 76.5. I'm just gonna manually override that. Again, not defending this. No, I do not wanna do this forever, but today it's gonna get our parts made. And you know what, for a production run, tweaking the code like this in the end of the world, uh, and we'll try to figure out why that needs fixed or what we did wrong. Now, let's go make some chips. Oh, 
Whoops, that's not good. It should not have uh, rotated before it retracted there. But it worked. How awesome was that? I definitely saw some stresses and some pushing and deflection on the trunnion, especially toward the end. So I wonder if changing the speeds and feeds or even the refreshing up that drill could help. You know, how do I make that a more rigid system? I'm not sure, but the job at hand here was actually just a clearance hole. So that's okay. Don't overbid the job. Don't over engineer it. I definitely wish that tailstock were easier to dial in. I'm still kind of chewing on that. Would I want to make my own? But how awesome is that? How easy is that? What an awesome, to me, better way to do something than and then farting around with all those sign bars and I don't know, just fun. So folks, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>